This video was produced by Total Care and DuPont, who share a deep commitment to firefighter safety. Firefighting is rough work. Even the best made turnouts are likely to suffer damage during the course of their useful life. When there is damage, it needs to be repaired immediately to maintain optimum levels of safety and performance. Repairs to turnouts are divided into two categories, basic repair and advanced repair. Basic repair is defined by NFPA 1851 as minor repairs that may be performed by a fire department's trained personnel, verified or non-verified ISP, or the original manufacturer. Advanced repairs are more complex. A verified ISP or the original manufacturer must perform them. This video will provide training for performing basic repairs on turnout gear. Basic repairs consist of repairing skipped, broken, and missing stitches on the outer shell, patching minor tears, char marks, and ember burns on the outer shell, replacing missing or damaged hardware on the outer shell, excluding positive closure systems, closing the liner system following a complete liner inspection, and sealing minor pinhole leaks in the moisture barrier. All repairs must be performed in the same manner and using like materials as the manufacturer. So, it's important to understand certain fundamentals of turnout construction in order to successfully perform basic repairs. Your turnout coats and pants are constructed of three layers. The outer shell, the moisture barrier, and the thermal liner. The thermal barrier and moisture barrier are either stitched together or attached to each other with Velcro to form the liner system. The liner system attaches to the outer shell with zippers, snaps, and Velcro. During this video, we will refer to major seams and minor seams. Major seams are seam assemblies where a rupture of the seam could reduce protection of the garment by exposing inner layers of the garment, such as the moisture barrier or thermal liner, the wearer's station work uniform, other clothing, or skin. If the major seam is in the outer shell, it is categorized as a major A seam. If it is in the liner system, it is categorized as a major B seam. Minor seams are used to attach items that are not critical to the structure of a turnout, such as a pocket or mic tab. The class of seams and types of stitches used to assemble a garment affect its durability, appearance, and ability to be repaired. Garments should be clean prior to starting any repairs. Make sure shell and liner are separated before conducting any repair. Make sure you are not stitching through any moisture barrier components Remember, moisture barrier material can be in collars, storm flaps, front facings, and in other locations. All repairs must be documented and kept on file with the department. Contact the manufacturer prior to making any repairs to CBRN ensembles. If your inspection reveals missing, broken, or skipped stitches on any component of your turnout, remove it from service and repair it immediately. Trained departmental personnel are permitted to replace stitches in the outer shell and thermal liner, but there are restrictions. You must repair the damaged stitches with the same type of stitch as the original. You must use the same type thread typically made from Nomex. You cannot sew into the moisture barrier other than to reclose after a complete liner inspection. You must consult the manufacturer if there is damage to more than one continuous inch on the outer shell or the thermal barrier major seam. As an example, we are restitching broken stitches on the pants cuffs of a turnout. The stitch originally used is a lock stitch that can be performed on most commercial machines. Lock stitches use two threads, the needle and bobbin, which interlock between the plies of fabric. This protects the knot from abrasion or snagging. Lock stitches don't unravel. When repairing damaged or missing stitches, you must overstitch by at least six stitches on each side. First, our seamstress backstitches to lock the beginning of the stitch, starting well before the missing stitches and finishes more than six stitches beyond. There can be no less than six stitches per inch. Neatly cut the thread on the top and bottom sides. Always inspect your repair.
Patching damaged areas on outer shells and thermal liners may be performed with the following restrictions. The patch can be no larger than five square inches. The patch must have a finished edge on all sides to prevent fraying. The finished edge of the patch must extend one inch beyond the damaged area in all directions. The patch must be made of the same material as the original equipment. Let's walk through the process of making a repair to a small tear on the outer shell of a coat. The garment must be clean and the liner system removed from the outer shell. Measure the damage. Remember the patch can be no more than five square inches and the finished edge of the patch must extend one inch beyond the damaged area in all directions. This means the damage area can be no larger than three square inches. This tear is less than an inch, so it meets the size criteria for basic repair. Our finished patch will be four square inches. Check the manufacturer's label to identify the material. In this example, we have an outer shell made from 7.3 ounce PBI matrix, so our patch must also be made from 7.3 ounce PBI matrix. Nomex brand fiber FR thread, compliant with NFPA 1971, should be used. Nomex thread adds heat resistance, strength, and durability to your repair. Cut the patch to size, adding one-eighth to one-quarter inch to each side to accommodate making a finished edge. Place the garment on your sewing machine. Turn each fabric edge under one-eighth to one-quarter inch. Position the patch by centering it over the damaged area. Stitch close to the folded edge using a straight stitch. Stitch all four sides of the patch. Patching is performed using a lock stitch with no less than six stitches per inch. Inspect the repair. Make sure there are no loose edges. Patching reflective trim has a different set of requirements. Repairs to reflective trim cannot exceed three linear inches in length. Each patch must extend one inch beyond the damaged area on both sides. You cannot have more than two trim patches per stripe of trim. You cannot patch over damaged trim. If replacing trim requires sewing into a major A seam, the manufacturer or a verified ISP must perform the replacement. To make a repair to trim, you first measure to determine if the damage qualifies as a basic repair. Because the patch cannot exceed three linear inches and must extend one inch beyond the damaged area on both sides, your damaged area cannot be longer than one linear inch. If it meets the basic repair criteria, Remove the damaged trim using a seam ripper and scissors. Place the garment on your machine and position a patch of identical trim material in its place and stitch. Use a lock stitch with a minimum of six stitches per inch. There should be an independent row of stitching on each side of the patch. Use more if the original employs more than one. Inspect the repair. Make sure there are no loose edges. Trained personnel can replace damaged or missing hardware, excluding positive closure on the coat or pants. Positive closures are zippers, hooks, and D's, etc. Snaps or hook and loop are considered non-positive closures. To demonstrate hardware replacement, we will replace a missing snap and damaged eyelet. To replace a missing snap, a kick press is used with a separate set of dies. Make sure you have the correct size die for the replacement hardware. Select the proper snap stud and socket. Place the snap socket on the die according to the toolmaker's instructions. Place the stud through the material opening. Align the stud with the tap and apply pressure. Replacing an eyelet is very similar, except we use a punch instead of a kick press. First, remove the damaged eyelet. Select the proper cap and washer. Replace the backing material if damaged. Position the eyelet cap on the garment. On the back side, place the backing material over the eyelet post and then the washer over the post. Crimp the post to hold the hardware in place. Place the assembly on the die and strike the punch with a mallet. Inspect. Check for functionality after completing repair. Complete liner inspections are required to be performed when a liner system has been in service for three years and then once a year after that. Many liner systems have inspection openings that allow you to perform a complete liner inspection without opening the hem seam. 
Liner systems that do not have an inspection opening must have the hem seam open to perform a complete liner inspection. Closing the hem of your liner system following a complete liner inspection requires a higher level of skill than patching or replacing stitches. It is not a job for a novice. Liner system hems are sewn closed in a variety of ways, depending on the make and year of your protective clothing. In our example, the liner system has a binding on the hem. We recommend replacing the original binding. At the very least, inspect the original for damage. To close the hem, first run a lock stitch to join the moisture barrier and the thermal liner. Set the binding in position. Make sure marks from the original stitching are captured under the binding. Remember to backstitch to lock the beginning of stitching in place. Now, stitch the entire length using a lock stitch with at least six stitches per inch. After the binding is completely sewn, neatly trim the threads. Inspect to ensure the thermal liner and moisture barrier are securely attached. Small, pin-sized holes in your moisture barrier can be repaired using seam tape from W.L. Gore & Associates. The only way it can be applied is by using an approved seam sealing device. Check with Lion Total Care to see if your device is approved for use. If you detect a leak during hydrostatic testing, mark where the leak is, let the moisture barrier dry, then cut a length of seam tape to cover the hole. We recommend at least one inch length of seam tape. Place the moisture barrier on the seam sealer film side up. Center the tape over your marking and engage the machine according to manufacturer's directions. After the repair is complete, test for leakage. To recap, trained departmental personnel may perform basic repairs on turnouts, as defined by NFPA 1851. All repairs must be performed in the same manner and using the same materials as the manufacturer. If you have any questions regarding what you're permitted to repair or about the repair itself, contact Lion Total Care at 800-253-2690.